There are some stations that play great top 40, but who wants to listen to the same old tunes every day? Tonight, you get something new, something fresh, something that will change your way of life. Tonight, you get the Frankie Slauson Show. On the Frankie Slauson Show, you'll hear great rare and lost songs from the 50s through today, plus iconic celebrity interviews and much, much more. So get ready, Rapid City, for the Frankie Slauson Show. The Frankie Slauson Show has arrived on your airwaves and now the School of Mines in Rapid City, South Dakota. Dakota, KTEQ 91.3 FM, and Frankie Slauson Productions present The Frankie Slauson Show. I've been trying to get my bosses to make the show 24 hours long since day one. Sounds great. All right. Hey everybody, welcome to another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show right here on uh, ktech.org, ktq.org, and YouTube. And uh, today I have a very special guest with me today. If you're familiar with the Diary of, of a Wimpy Kid book series and the film series, well, I got a man who uh, created that series, Mr. Jeff Kinney. Welcome to the show, Jeff. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's uh, quite the honor to be able to talk to you because I... You know, you're you're such a you're such a big name in the uh, the uh, book industry and, and and maybe even in the film industry as well. After the success of all three of the, the all three of the films, and uh, I'm just uh, surprised that we actually could do this today. <laughs> well, thank you very much. I'm I'm honored to be here. And then uh, you know, what is the true? Uh, uh, I don't know. I guess the question would be, what is the, your true truly a key to success when it comes to uh, the book series? Uh, I think I think that I've created a character that kids relate to. You know, the the kid uh, Greg Heffley is not a, a heroic. He's um, you know he he is very flawed and he doesn't always do the right thing. And I think a lot of kids can relate to that. Um, most children in children's literature, most heroic children are are like miniature adults. Um, so I think that that. Uh, Kids don't often see themselves in the characters as they're brave and they, you know, and they, and they overcome the obstacles. You know, a lot of kids are much more like Greg Kefley, oh, uh, sure. the would-be kid. Yeah, and I think uh, too. Uh, do you think that this book series kind of helps with? Uh, because I think uh, bullying is kind of a big thing nowadays, probably more than it ever was. Do you think it kind of helps with that kind of? In a way, I'm not. Sure. I'm not sure. I certainly didn't write my books to to address any any real uh, social concerns. Um, but you know, I, as um, I've seen the book get out to other countries, I've seen that, for example, in Italy, um, these books are seen as sort of an answer to bullying somehow. Uh, so I think that the books have an effect that that I'm uh, not completely aware of, and it, depending on who's reading them. Oh, okay, and uh, how did you get started uh, with uh, the whole thought of uh, writing uh, writing your first first uh, uh, diary of a kid book? Well, I had actually wanted to be a newspaper cartoonist, but that didn't work out for me. Um, so I, I went in a different direction, and I tried uh, something really kind of unexpected, um, which was to put cartoons into book format. Um, and so I was lucky enough that it that it worked out for me. Yeah, and it seems like uh, it definitely did because uh, a lot of people are, are familiar with your work. I mean, especially more nowadays than, than uh, ever before. I, I think the, I think personally, what what helped it was actually when you finally decided to, to uh, uh, put the books uh, on film, so to speak. And, and I'm a huge fan of the of the film series because uh, I'm just a movie buff uh, as it is anyway. And I think once uh, once the films came out. Uh, that really got uh, the doors open for you. I, I, that's what I believe, anyway. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I think I think you might be right. I think it exposed a lot of people to the to the books that might have been exposed otherwise. So I, I'm I'm grateful for the uh, the exposure uh, that the movies caused. Do you feel that the the, the films are are almost like uh, similar to the books, or, or are the books a little bit different than the the, the films? I think it really is. They're different in some ways and, and similar in others. I think that they 
um, you know, they capture, the, the movies definitely capture the spirit of what I was going for. Um, so that was, that was important to me. You know, I was really involved, much more so than, than an author normally is. Um, so I got to have a really neat experience with the films, and I got to, uh, I got to make friendships that I think will be lasting friendships. Oh, wow. And uh, do you see a, a fourth film in, coming up in the series at all, or are we kind of done with the, uh, the film series now? Yeah, I think we're done with the film series because the kids have aged out of the roles. <laughs> um, but, you know, I'm, I'm moving into animated holiday specials, uh, so that that's what I'm most interested in right now. Okay, okay. Something, something uh, getting ready for the holidays, to, 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 or something for people to get ready for the holidays. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's cool. Uh, and, and now you're releasing your eighth book in the series uh, called uh, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Hard Luck. How is this uh, different from the uh, past seven fil- or past seven books? It's in in many ways it's it's the same. You know, I'm really um, trying to to not change things up too much in Greg Heffler's life. I'm I'm trying to uh, give kids laughs like they they have expected. Um, so, but it's uh, you know it's new territory for me comedically. I'm, I'm having fun. Uh, having Greg be a, a bit of a loner and having him be a more sympathetic character than he's been in the past. So, in those ways, it is different. Okay. And, uh, like, uh, what's kind of the, the premise of the of the story, kind of, like, uh, what's kind of, if you can give some... Sure. Yeah, the premise of the story is that Greg is on his own for the first time. For the first time, he's without his best friend, Raleigh Jefferson. Okay. And he has to, uh, he has to make his own decisions. And he uh, finds it to be kind of difficult. He, he uh, ends up having to turn his life over to fate, and that's where most of the comedy comes from in this book. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, I, I tell you, when you do these books, you know, you, you keep it with the with the theme of uh, kind of the same animation, you know, on the cover, and and, and kind of the yeah. kind of the same uh, uh, kind of the same format, almost like because. Uh, uh, I, I remember hearing in other interviews that you kind of wanted to keep Greg Heffley like still kind of a uh, like you, you you don't want him to age. You want him to, to still stay in like the same character or like the same grade or something like that. Like he never passes or something like that. Is that true? Or? Yeah, <laughs> that's correct. You know, I want him to be a middle school student forever. Yeah, but that would that would actually make a lot of sense because uh, as the characters in the film, obviously, like you said, you know, have age and stuff. But it's just nice that. It's like what they did. Like, it's like what they did with Garfield. You know, I mean, Garfield's you know been a, around forever. You know, Jim Davis you know, pretty much made him the lazy cat that hates Mondays and and that likes to uh, uh, attack Odie and everything. And and, uh, <laughs> and he's yeah, been doing that yeah. for for a long time anyway. Yeah, in cartoons, I think people like uh, familiarity. And they like um, they like to be able to count on something. So I think that's what I try to do with with Greg Heffley. I don't like to change it up too much. Did you? Uh, I'm sure you had some uh, some people that inspired you to even become uh, a comic strip guy, let alone an author. Uh, who were some of these people? Well, uh, when I was a kid, I really wanted to be a part of that fraternity of cartoonists like Bill Watterson and and uh, the guy and um, uh, Gary Larson, um, who did the Far Side. I wanted to be a part of that experience. And when I grew up, I tried to get my I worked published and and I couldn't, um, so I really had to go in a different direction. So I think I'm I'm a cartoonist, but I'm a different kind of cartoonist. So what do you think you would have, uh, or what ideas do you think you would have done if the Diary of Whippy Kid uh, book series wouldn't have been successful for you? I think I would have kept plugging away. It might have been hard to keep to keep working at this, but um, I felt like I was a decent writer, uh, so I felt like I had a shot to get my work seen in some way um, I felt like I could kind of outwork other other people in some ways uh, like I was willing to put in the time um, so I, I think I would have found a way I'm not sure what that way would have been but I think I would have found something but luckily you don't have to worry about that because we all know that you have become successful for, because of all this and, <laughs> and and do you see this series continuing even after book number 8 or what's your plan? yeah I do I, I'm going to write um, at least uh at least one more book, or at least two more books, and we'll see where it goes from there. I'm not sure what the what the future of, of the characters is, but if I'm writing well, I'm to stop. And uh, I'm, I'm sure you two are a lot of, 
are there a lot of kids that are well that uh, are familiar with your work when you go on tour and when you get to meet some of these people? Yeah, I do meet uh, a lot of kids out there in the world, and and uh, that's the most rewarding part because I I work hard on the books, and then finally I get to go out and see the fruits of my labor, uh, and I get to uh, to meet the kids who are actually reading the books. I think that it's kind of neat because you know a lot of authors, you know, you know, really take the time to. To let alone take time for kids, you know, they take time for adults. They wouldn't really take time yeah. for kids, and then you're one of the rare few that actually would take time for who, you know, whether they're familiar with your book series or not, uh, you'd still take time for that kid. And I think that's, uh, I think that's quite neat. Yeah. Well, that's very nice to say, and uh, you know, I I feel it's it's really rewarding to get to meet this. So thank you. Yeah, no problem. And the last question that I have for you is, is a question that I like to ask anybody, especially when they're uh, as uh, big of an icon as you've uh, become uh, in, in your career. Uh, what advice would you have to, for somebody who would actually be an upcoming author or who wanted to create something similar to what you're doing, but not exactly similar, but what would you, what advice would you have for somebody that uh, wants to get your line of work? I would say to, um, I would encourage, I think they have a winning idea to nurture it rather than putting it right out there, uh, to try to uh, develop the idea. You know, it, it takes you about 10 years to be an expert in something, and I think it's it's worth putting in that time to really create a world and a vision that, that's complete. Okay. All right, well, I tell you what, Jeff, uh, I appreciate uh, uh, having you on. I mean, this is, like I said, a rare treat, and uh, and I hope uh, I hope see more stuff from you. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. All right, you have a good one. Take, Bye. Take care. And that was Mr. Jeff Kinney. A little quick, uh, quick interview, but uh, I just figure I, I just had a few questions that I wanted to ask him. Let alone, I think it was kind of cool just the fact to be able to talk to him because this will probably be, uh, as I was making an announcement before, the probably one of my last interviews that I do for a while because I... I want to focus now on making more YouTube videos and stuff, and I just, uh, I'm just kind of burnt out of doing interviews and stuff. Uh, I've done, this would be number 51 of 2013, and when you add that to the 20 that I did last year, that's 71 interviews in about a year and, over a year and three months anyway, since, uh, I continue, I, I restarted this series. I will probably do some more interviews later on, but for right now, I just want to take a break and, and be able to, uh, I do other things and and pursue other goals and stuff now that I'm here in Rapid City and stuff. So I appreciate you guys for taking along for this interview. And uh, I appreciate uh, everybody who listened to all the other interviews. Uh, please continue to, to keep tuned in to uh, the YouTube channel because uh, you never know, you know, what could, you, know, you never know who, who would be next up in line. But I think from all the people I interviewed from way back in June of 2006, from Greg the Hammer Valentine all the way to to now Jeff Kinney, I think that's definitely uh, a lot, you know, people, and uh, I when you tally it up, uh, even though on my YouTube page it only says about 86 or 87 people I've interviewed, but really, I've interviewed well over 100 people uh, in my time of doing interviews, and and uh, I have, if I were to quit today, I would definitely have nothing to be ashamed of, you know, because I've had the chance to do something really cool, and something that uh, has brought me some Great luck here, there. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so we're going to take a break from doing some of the interviews for now and uh, focus on other things. And So stay tuned. Once again, thanks for tuning in to another great Frankie Slauson Show interview and ktech.org, ktq.org, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Well, thanks for tuning in to the Frankie Slauson Show on KTEQ Radio 91.3 FM. We hope we left you with a smile and a reason to tune in next week right here on the Frankie Slauson Show. It's where you want to be tuned into. You've got something that everyone's got, but yours is much bigger. Totally fascinating.